So the last couple of uh, videos we've been looking at sequences. In the last video we looked at something specific called an arithmetic sequence. Now we're going to look at uh, something slightly different called a series. And uh, basically what an arithmetic series is, is when the terms of an arithmetic sequence are added together. That gives you a series. So for example, we've got a sequence here, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. That's an arithmetic sequence. How we make it into a series is we add these terms together, and that means we're going to put a plus sign between the terms. So if you add two sets of numbers written together, you'd know you had a sequence if they had commas between them, and you know you have a series if you have a set of addition symbols between them. And since we're talking about adding or finding the sum, we're going to use the symbol s of n to represent that we're finding the sum. So in this particular series up here, we have one, two, three, four, five terms. So we want to find the sum of those five terms. So we write that as s of five. Now, we could just use our calculator and go 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. We could just add those things together and get a total. But um, lots of times the series is much longer than five terms. So what we're going to look at doing for the next little part of the video is we're going to look at how you can easily find the sum of a large group of numbers and then how, how they came up with a formula to do this. And the person who actually came up with the formula for the sum of an arithmetic series is a fellow by the name of Carl Gauss. He's a famous mathematician. Uh, he lived in the 1700s and 1800s. And there's a little story about how he managed to kind of derive this. So we're going to read this story quickly. And then we're going to use the numbers in this story to help us lead to developing the actual formula for the sum of a given arithmetic series. So it says when Carl was 10 years old, he was placed in Master Butner's arithmetic class, and Master Butner often gave them long arithmetic problems to keep them quiet. And on a particular day, Master Butner asked the students to add all the numbers from 1 to 100 together. And most of the other students started working madly and at that time, they used slates. They didn't have paper. They just had little boards where you wrote with chalk. And Carl just put his slate down and said to his teacher, well, I'm finished. And his teacher said, well, what answer did you get? And Carl, in fact, got the right answer of 5,050. And how he actually got that answer really quickly was he took the numbers from 1 to 100, and he wrote them in ascending order. And then he took the numbers from 1 to 100 and he wrote them in descending order. And then he started to add these together. So if you've got the sum of 100 plus the sum of 100, that means you've got two sums of 100. 1 plus 100 is 101. 2 plus 99 is 101. 3 plus 98 is 101. And so on. And you're going to notice that the sum of each pair of numbers is always going to be 101. And how many pairs of numbers do we have in this series? Well, we've got 100 pairs. So this equation actually is 101 added together 100 times. Or that's the same thing as saying 100 times 101. Well, if you actually take out your calculator, and you go 100 times 101, you're going to find out that the answer is 10,100. Now, that's two sums of 100. So how do we get one sum of 100? Well, we divide both sides by 2, and one sum of a, from 1 to 100 is actually 5,050. So Carl was pretty good with numbers and he could do most of this in his head and instead of going 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, he was able to quickly add all those numbers together and get a solution quite quickly. Now, as Carl realized and most, most mathematicians realized, they don't want to have to do this process for every single set of numbers they might actually have. So 
Then they started working on coming up with a formula for trying to derive the sum of a set of numbers. And how the formula worked is as follows. <clears throat> If we take some set of numbers, the first term is a. How do we get the second term? Well, we add a common difference to that first term. How do we get the third term? Well, we add, take the first term and we add two differences, and so on. If we write this in reverse order, the last term in the series, and that's what they did here, they started with the last term, the second last term, etc. They wrote it in reverse order. Well, that last term is some term in that series, and the term was determined by using our TN formula. It's A plus N minus 1 times D. So you're taking and you're subtracting a difference. How do you get the second term? Well, you subtract two differences. How do you get the third term? Well, you take the first, this term, and you subtract three differences, and so on. So now if we start adding this together, Sn plus Sn gives us two S of Ns. A plus A gives us 2A. We have nothing else here, so we've got plus N minus 1 times d. Same thing here, if we add the next grouping of terms together, a plus a is going to give us 2a. Now n minus 2d take away a d is going to give us n minus 1d's. So you'll see these terms end up being the same, just like over here when we added 100 plus 1, 2 plus 99, 3 plus 98. We got 101 each time. So how many groupings of this 2a plus n minus 1d are we going to have? Well, the number of terms in that series. So we're going to have to multiply by the number of terms in the series. Just like here, we had 100 terms in the series. We multiplied our 101 by 100. Here, we're multiplying our 2a plus n minus 1d times the number of terms so, to get our final formula, we have to divide each side by 2. So we get n divided by 2 times 2a plus n minus 1 times d. And this actually is one of the formulas for finding the sum of an arithmetic series. So once you know the number of terms, the first term and the common difference, you can plug those into this formula. Some of you are sitting there going, Mr. Kaminsky, you just blew my mind, like how you came up with this formula. Well, one of the things they ask me to do when I teach you is to show how this formula was derived. Am I ever going to ask that of you on a quiz or a test? No, really what I want you to be able to do is use this particular formula to solve problems. But it's kind of nice to know how they did come up with the formula. It's kind of some theoretical math that's there. Now, you're sometimes going to see this particular formula written a little bit differently. You may see it written like this, and that's how it's written in your workbook, is instead of writing n divided by 2, they just put the whole expression over 2. There's also a second formula for finding the sum of an arithmetic series. In this particular formula, if you know a, which is the first term, and you know t of n, which is the last term, you can add the first and last term together, multiply it by the number of terms, and divide by 2. So that's a special kind of case of finding the sum of an arithmetic series. So you want to have both of these formulas at your disposal so that depending on the type of question you get, you can use the correct formula. So now what we're going to do 